Council Member is present, though uh, Council Member uh, Range and I are here virtually, and uh, what else is in the Council Chambers? Um, for those that are able, I invite you to uh, join us with uh, pledge allegiance, but uh, so yes, please rise and please remain standing after the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, Republic for which it stands. one day under God. God, under God, indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice for all. Just want to take a moment to uh, remember a couple of longtime Madison residents who we lost over the last few weeks. Thompson McDaniel, he was a native of uh, Nashville, Tennessee, been a longtime Madison resident, passed away on April 14th at age 85. He survived by his children and Catherine Thompson Jr. and Sarah and their respective spouses and nine grandchildren. He was preceded death by his wife of 40 years, Mary uh, Barrow McDaniel. Born in Nashville in 37, he earned a Bachelor of Arts from Vanderbilt, and there is where he met Mary. They moved to Greenwich Village in 1959 as he was working on Wall Street, and soon afterward, he was drafted into the Army, where he was honorably served for two years during peacetime. And he had a long, successful career as a bond trader, and, um, and after retiring from Wall Street, he founded, along with several associates, the Bank of Somerset Hills, now known as Lakeland Bank. He was also president of Morris County Golf Club from 96 to 99. Also, we remember Emma Lepore, a longtime Madison resident, on, uh, passed on April 21st, just one day after her 91st birthday. She's survived by her two, two daughters, Angelina and Giovanna, and her son, Giovanni, also known as Mike Lepore, and five grandchildren. She was predeceased by her husband, Archangelo Mike Lepore. She was born in Mount. Fusco, Italy, married her husband, Mike, and emigrated to the United States in 62 with her young family, and they settled right here in Madison, where she lived till her death. Um, she was career spanning several decades with Madison Board of Education as a head cook at Madison High School. She took great pride in her work retiring in 99. So let's take a moment to remember Thompson McDaniel, McDaniel and Emma Lepore, and let's pass our thoughts on to the families and friends that they leave behind. Thank you. Be seated. May I have a motion for the executive minutes of um, April 10th, 2023? I don't know if I'm catching that order. I assume there's, there's a motion in a second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There we go. Now I can hear you. Okay. And a motion for the regular minutes of April 10th, 2023. So moved. Second. Any discussion or corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Welcome all even though I'm not there with you. Uh, with the taste of Madison on Monday, and we, uh, we had the subsequent and shifted meeting uh, for this week. So I come to you virtually, as uh, Eric also had to do the same. Um, and speaking of the taste of Madison, it was a great success with a great turnout, certainly plenty of great food from our restaurants. And thank, thank you to all who attended and all the restaurants that gave of their time and their food. The event is a sponsorship with, uh, by Rotary, Madison Chamber of Commerce, and the Downtown Development Commission, and certainly a chance to really highlight what Madison's all about. And other happenings over the past two weeks included the annual Madison Little, Leagues, uh, Little League and the Girls Softball Parade. This is a decades-old tradition that kicks off the season with a march down Main Street to Dodge Field, and it is always an impressive sight as you look down Main Street and see the... Uh, you know, what looks to go forever of all the uh, players marching down there and then sitting down the outfield of Dodge Field. Um, and on 
April 18th, I wrapped up my school reading tour at all three elementary schools at the Kings Road School for their family reading night, which was fun as always. And Wednesday, I hosted the Madison High School Government Academy. This is a program for students all across the county who attend Madison High for traditional courses along with an emphasis on learning about local government and uh, other levels. And they spent the morning learning about local government from the Madison perspective. And uh, that afternoon, I attended uh, the annual EV Expo to cut the ribbon, not only on the Expo, but also Madison being recognized and recognized as Destination Electric. This came as a work that we that has been done under Lisa Ellis's um, leadership in securing grants for and the ins actual installation of charging stations. So Madison will now be marketed as destination for those that um, own electric vehicles. And just a handful of uh, New Jersey communities are on that list right now. I would encourage you to take a look at uh, just search uh, destination electric and you'll see how they lay that out. And uh, this meeting's uh, Drew update is the news of support that we have from Senator Cory Booker and Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill. They have each supported funding for the Drew Forest in their respective Senate and, and House special funding package. Each grant would be for $5 million and would go towards the funding of the forest per preservation. The, the big if is Congress will have to approve these grants before they actually become a reality. So we've got our fingers crossed, but we truly appreciate the effort they have made to uh, help out to preserve that uh, beautiful forest. And um, also, uh, just so you know, the next council meeting on May 8th is when we will uh, select the person to um, fill out the recently vacated uh, council seat by uh, Deb Cohen. That person will, would serve until the general election in November. And now to avoid the awkwardness of presenting proclamations from afar, I will ask Council President John Hoover to present two proclamations, one for the annual letter carriers food drive and a surprise proclamation, which I will let him uh, break the news about. Good to meet you. of children, senior citizens, and veterans, a reality that has been tackled by the U.S. letter carrier carriers through their food drive, which is held annually on the second Saturday in May. And whereas the Stamp Out Hunger Food Program drive is the country's largest one-day food collection that provides residents with an easy way to donate food to those in need. And whereas the NALC food drive is held in 10,000 cities and towns in all 50 states, District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and Guam, and is helped by many local volunteer groups, including the United Way, Salvation Army, Catholic Charities, National Guard Units, American Legion, and Veterans of Foreign Wars, Boy, Boy and Girl Scouts, Rotary Clubs, and ARP groups, and whereas in the 31 years since it began, the food drive has collected about 1.82 billion pounds of food, and whereas the timing of the food, whereas currently more than 42 million Americans are unsure where their food, their next meal is coming from, and whereas the timing of the food drive is crucial because the majority of food donations are received through the Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday seasons, and by spring, many food banks and pantries are depleted. Now, therefore, I, on behalf of Robert H. Conley, mayor of the borough of Madison, and on behalf of the governing body, do hereby proclaim Saturday, May 13th, 2023, as National Association of Letter Carriers Food Drive Day, and encourage residents to support the food drive by placing non-perishable food items in or near your mailbox on food drive day. Further, I commend the National Association of Letter Carriers for initiating the humanitarian project that will directly benefit those in need in our community. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Would you like to say a few words? Yes, yes, we're ready, we're ready. This year, last year we did good, but this year, I believe in Madison, we're gonna do better.
celebration of National Clerks Week, mm -hmm. April 8th, 30th through May 6th, 2023. Whereas the office of the municipal clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government ex exists throughout the world, and whereas the office of the municipal clerk is the oldest public of, among public servants, and whereas the office of the municipal clerk provides the professional link between the citizens, the local governing bodies and agencies of government in other, at other levels, and whereas the municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all, and whereas the municipal clerk serves as the information center regarding functions of local government and community, and whereas municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the Office of Municipal Clerk through participation in educational programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, county, and international professional organizations, and whereas it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of Office of Municipal Clerk Notably, Elizabeth Osborne, Caridad Reyes, Bonnie Mulcahy, and Helene Corlett. Now, I, on behalf of the mayor, Bob Connolly, mayor of the borough of Madison, and on behalf of the governing party, do hereby congratulate to recognize the week of April 10th, 30th, through May 6th as Municipal Clerks Week. And further, extend the appreciation to our Municipal Clerk, Elizabeth Osborne, and her staff and the municipal clerks for all the vital services they perform and their exemplary uh, dedication to the communities they represent. Just, <laughs> not really, but I'll <laughs> It's an honor and a privilege to serve mayor and council on the residents of Madison. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Here to you. Thank, thank you, Liz. We surprise you every year, don't we? <laughs> All right. We will move to reports from committee. Senior Affairs. Council President Hoover. Thank you, Mayor. Downtown Development Commission Director of Business Development. Downtown Development Commission will hold its next meeting on Thursday, May 18th at 7.15 in the Hartley Dodge Memorial Building Committee Room, second floor, right next door. The public is invited to attend. The Nature of Reading Bookstore will hold its opening day, ribbon cutting and reception on Earth Day, Saturday, April 22nd. They are now open for business. Please visit and welcome them to Madison. There is still time to volunteer or enjoy all the great activities at Madison Green and Clean on Saturday, April 29th from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Email ddcrosenet at rosenet.org for more information. Here are some of the uh, items that will be included. Arbor Day celebration, the kickoff event. You'll hear my voice, my lovely voice again. Uh, echo friendly, excuse me, echo friendly vendor tabling by native plants and seeds from Toad, Sh Toad Shade Wildflower Farm. Get free tree seedlings from Friends of Madison Shade Trees, native oaks, dogwoods, and eastern rosebuds, redbuds. Get trusted advice on, on leaving the leaves and saving the stems, organic lawn care, providing habitat for pollinators, and more from Madison Environmental Commission members. Chat with the New Jersey Watershed Ambassador about where our drinking water comes from and where our rainwater goes. Learn from the Climate Action Committee and Sustainable Madison Advisory Committee about key climate actions for 2023 that are recommended for endorsement by Borough's governing body, body and steps you can take to lower your energy consumption and reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Talk to friends of Drew Forest about community-wide efforts to save the Drew Forest. Find out about quiet communities, how quiet communities is helping towns reduce health and environment, environmental harm from noise and pollution. Discover hiking trails and great economic echo events, 
uh, hosted by Great Swamp Watershed Association, learned about environmental justice by talking with the representatives of the Wind of the Spirit, eco-friendly presentations and activities, visit the new Madison Public Schools Pollinator Habitat, 359 Woodland Road, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., with projects leaders Joan McCurry and Bridget Daly to learn more about pollinators and native plants, why we're leaving the leaves and saving stems, and, and the best way to mulch. If you can, help us pull a few of the weeds while we're, we're at the RSVP. Presentation of the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts, Education Annex, 10 to 11.30 a.m. Free screening of a recorded talk by Madison, for Madison, by acclaimed ecologist and entomologist, Douglas Tallamy, based on the best-selling book, Nature's Best Hope, a new approach to conservation that starts in your yard. Dr. Tallamy, uh, Dr. Tallamy's eye-opening talk, which includes answers to questions from Madison residents, is a must-see. Musical performances at Hartley Dodge Memorial, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Madison and the Chathams Spring Yard Sale will also take place on the 29th. Volunteer for townwide spring cleanup, approximately 15 sites throughout town. The Madison area YMCA is hosting our annual Healthy Kids Day on April 29th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Our Teen Leaders Club is going to be planting seedlings at the event amongst other activities for children and families such as bounce house, sporting games, face painting, and more. It is a free event and open to the community. Only registration is required at Flex Reg Program Detail, Madison Area YMCA, activecommunities.com. From the Chamber of Commerce, the Chamber is accepting nominations for this year's Extra Mile Award, initiative to recognize and celebrate individuals who have provided excellent customer service in our community. No, nom nominations are open to everyone in the community, and we encourage residents, business owners, and visitors to nominate individuals who deserve recognition in their outstanding service. For more information, please contact madisonnjchamber.com. Ladies' Night is scheduled for Thursday, May 11th from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Madison Community Arts Center. The new exhibit should have been there by Haitian-born photographer Patrick Hilaire of black jazz musicians in performance. It is on the walls of the center until Saturday, May 7th. Starting at 11, May 11th, the gallery will feature works by Madison High School students and the Advanced Placement Visual Arts Program. There will be a reception from 5 to 7 p.m., and the art will remain on the wall until May 15th. Gallery hours are posted at madisonartnj.org. Uh, Spotlight Kids will present their production of Emma from Friday, May, April 28th through Sunday, April 30th. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, John. And now for finance for the clerk and public works and engineering, uh, Ms. Earl. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. The Office of the Tax Collector reminds us that second quarter property taxes are due May 1st. Note that the Tax Collector's Office is now located in the Finance Department on the second floor of Hartley Dodge. Residents can bring their payment to the Tax Collector's Office or they can leave their payment in the drop box located in the Clerk's Office on the first floor. Now we turn to the budget. <clears throat> Tonight we will have the budget hearing and vote to adopt the 2023 municipal budget. Nothing has changed since the introduction of the budget one month ago, so the numbers in tonight's budget resolution R130-2023 are exactly what was discussed on March 27th. To put things in perspective, I want to underscore that tonight's vote includes the actual hearing, as we have been hearing about and discussing the budget for many months. Borough staff started working on the budget last summer, and Council has had seven public meetings on the budget. All these presentations and the information can be found on the annual budget process page on Rosenet. The budget is presented in multiple formats, including a one-sheet budget summary, 
the official 86-page state budget document, plus a newer document created by the state called the User-Friendly Budget. Later in the year, the borough will be mailing out a flyer that includes charts, data, and an even more simplified budget for reference. As I mentioned, the Council voted to introduce the budget on March 27th, and by state law, we have to wait at least 28 days before we have a hearing. That's tonight's hearing. The state established this 28-day waiting period to make sure the public has an opportunity to review and comment on the budget. Simply stated, the 28-day waiting period is for transparency. The Council takes the budget and transparency very seriously. All the Council discussions and previous presentations are recorded and available to view whenever you want, and all of the reports and schedules that are presented to Council are available on ROSENET. I believe this is an excellent and sound budget. There are no changes to the municipal services provided to residents, and we continue to support a robust capital program including repaving roads, purchasing necessary equipment, and investing in our infrastructure and our built environment including this summer an all-new redesigned and landscaped Cook, parking plaza, Cook Plaza parking lot and a few other projects I'll highlight in a moment as part of the engineering report. As a reminder, this is a calendar year budget that runs from January to December. We did pass a temporary budget at our reorganization meeting in January so we could keep the borough running and so that new elected officials like Council Member Tom Harlan-Pudis could get involved in the budget right away. I joined with the Borough Administration and the Finance Department in thanking all the members of the governing body and the public for being engaged in this process and for offering great insights and comments throughout. Now it's the end of April and almost one third of the year has passed. <clears throat> it, is, <clears throat> excuse me, it is time to vote on this budget so our department heads know what they have to work with and so we can recommit as we do every year to the business of serving our residents. Next is the engineering report. The Cook Avenue parking lot project that I mentioned will have a construction bid opening on May 2nd at 10 a.m. in the courtroom, and the MRC basketball and pickleball court will also have a bid opening two days later on May 4th at the same time and place. The Memorial Park footbridge repair project is now complete and looking great. Our slate of roadway milling and overlay projects was awarded today to Schifano Construction with work uh, scheduled to take place this summer. Other construction projects scheduled for this summer include the Green Avenue pedestrian crossing improvements, the construction of improved Memorial Park trails, the Dodge Field accessible playground project, and sanitary sewer lining projects. We are pleased that all of these were funded in part through New Jersey DOT aid or community development block grants. Madison Public Library interior renovations, for which the library received a $900,000 grant from the state, will be advertised tomorrow with a bid opening scheduled for June 8th. The Public Works Department reports that the uh, Parks Department continues to line all the fields and that we had a very successful opening day for softball and Little League, as the mayor mentioned. Big thanks to the hardworking crew that keeps our fields in good shape for our, our players. DPW was also able to perform some concrete repairs to the dugouts at Rosedale before they were repainted and they're looking great as well. The road department is filling up, is filling potholes and fixing fencing, and Public Works also installed the Jersey barriers for the start of this year's outside dining program. A special announcement about Arbor Day. Uh, this is something that the Shade Tree Management Board and Friends of Madison Shade Tree has passed on for me to let people know about. Madison is celebrating Arbor Day this Saturday, rain or shine. In the case of rain, the celebration will take place in the rotunda of this building. Madison's commitment to trees and green spaces goes back a long way, almost 40 years now. Shade Tree Management Board member Nancy Bruce has for the last 25 years organized and overseen the Arbor Day program and done all of the paperwork and processing that allows Madison to receive the annual Tree City USA Award and Tree City Growth Award. So a, a huge thanks to Nancy for helping Madison be recognized year over year for our commitment to our canopy trees and open space. <clears throat> this year at the Arbor Day celebration, we are honoring the many contributions of Shade Tree Management Board member Vince Lacari, who we remembered this year with gratitude following his passing in January. We will be planting a tree in Memorial Park this spring in his honor. Also on Arbor Day, we will have the presentation of the Tree City USA flag to Madison for the 38th consecutive year and the Tree City Growth Award for the 16th consecutive year. We will enjoy Arbor Day performances by our elementary school students, including instrumental and choral music, original poetry, 
and from St. Vincent's, the Maypole dancing. There will be a giveaway of 150 native tree seedlings together with information about each species and how to plant a bare root tree. Also uh, this Saturday, we are scheduled to have the town-wide yard sale uh, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the 29th. However, it may be postponed because of the projected rain. A decision by the sponsors, which is the, the Chathams, Madison, and the Great Swamp Watershed Association, will be made tomorrow afternoon and posted on Rosenet and social media. So stay tuned for the outlook for the yard sale. That's all, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, will you tell me, Mr. Landrigan? Thank you, Mayor. From the, uh, from the electric department. The electric department installed two new riser poles for the service upgrade at 318 Main Street, which is the Rosewood condominiums. The department completed the new upgrade of three-phase service overhead transformer bank, poles, cabling, and meter wiring for Starbucks located at 306 Main Street. In anticipation of future home construction and EV charging station installations on Wayne Boulevard, the department is currently working on the new pole sets, transform upgrades, and wire repairs. The electric line clearance program will commence on April 24th for a 14-week period. And finally, the department is preparing the underground duct work for, for our fiber optic cable runs between the substations, which is part of our ongoing control and equipment upgrading. From the water department, the water department excavated and repaired a water service line to one of the drinking fountains at the MRC. And the department, with the assistance of the mechanics department, repaired a flush ground hydrant that is used to supply outside contractors with construction or landscaping water. And as a liaison to the Patriotic Celebrations Committee, I just want everybody to know that this all-volunteer committee made up primarily of vet veterans, uh, is currently planning the Memorial Day Parade. And as they pointed out, this is a very solemn occasion uh, in light of what's going on around the world today. Um, and they're looking at every detail. They're working to get a number of participants involved. So I just want to give a shout out to them and I'll keep you updated as they uh, proceed along with this with uh, Memorial Day being May 29th. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And public safety, Mr. Range. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, from the police department, Detective Sergeant Ken Shannon held a substance abuse warning signs presentation entitled Hidden in Plain Sight to Madison Junior School Parents last week. This presentation also included members of the Madison Chatham Coalition and members of the Chatham Borough Police Department. The purpose of the exhibit is to help parents and other adults see the environment with new eyes, to see the warning signs of substance abuse that may be obvious once they are pointed out, and then help them have a conversation with the team to stop dangerous behaviors before the worst happens, addiction, legal trouble, injury, or even death. And from the fire department, Lieutenant Robert Dunn and Firefighter Evan Webb completed a 40-hour Fire Officer 1 course at the Union County, Union County Fire Academy. This past Sunday uh, at approximately 4 a.m., Madison's firefighters along with neighboring fire departments responded into Morristown for a three-alarm fire on Catherine Lane. All occupants made it out safely. There was one minor firefighter injury. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. And lastly tonight, uh, big news from our public safety departments overall. Um, with the new uh, municipal trunk radio system going live this week, this is a project that's years in the making and largely funded through the Federal American Rescue Plan funding uh, that we were awarded a couple years ago. The Madison Police Department went live along with DPW and electric utility earlier this week, and fire and EMS will join them by the end of the week. Beyond the municipal entities, this new radio system will allow other organizations, uh, such as Madison Public Schools, St. Vincent Schools, and Drew University, and other pub uh, partner public safety entities, integrated communications access in the event of an emergency. 
A huge thanks to Police Captain Longo, Fire Chief DeRosa, and Michael Pelissier in coordinating these efforts to get the system up and running. Thank you, Mayor. That's all for tonight. Thank you. And help, Mr. Howard Putus. Sorry, Mayor. I'm sorry again. So one, one action item to report from the Board of Health uh, that there is going to be a power outage temporarily over the weekend around the Central Business District. So the Board of Health inspectors are working closely with the administration and the local business owners and restaurant managers who will be affected by the electrical utility maintenance next weekend. Uh, Melanie is the director. She's been pleased with the cooperation of the restaurants. They have all received a formal written notice in person about some power outage guidelines from the FDA, and the inspectors will be out on Sunday and Monday to follow up with them after the power outage is over. That's all, Mayor. Thank you. And now we move on to the budget, which was very well set up by uh, this is when you may both have the hearing. Um, you may come up and ask questions or comment on the budget. If you're asking questions, we will capture all those questions and answer them at, as we close the hearing, either by through council discussion or from our CFO. So at this point, I open the hearing for anyone wishing to comment or ask questions on the budget. Please step forward, and as you do to the lectern, state your name or address, write the same on the clipboard. Try to keep your comments to three minutes, but we give you a one-minute grace period. And remember, this is just on the budget. So anyone wishing to uh, comment, please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. I now ask for a motion on Resolution 130-2023, Resolution of the Borough of Madison, finally adopting the 2023 Budget and Tax Resolution. Mayor, I move Resolution 130-2023. Second. Any council discussion? And uh, the only council member I can see is uh, Bob. So if there's discussion, I just ask that you do it in um, order, starting from uh, John Hoover and working on a round. Any, any council discussion or further comments? My, my microphone. OK, Mayor Tom Harrell and Putis. See me? You don't see yeah, me. I can yeah, hear you. you can't hear me. I just, want to, I, just, I just want to compliment Jim Burnett and his team on putting this whole budget together. I'm looking at the user-friendly version, which actually does give some pretty good information, Jim, so it's good that you shared that with us, and thank you very much. Yeah, other than that, I think that's a well-balanced budget for the community and uh, keeps us in a good, stable place. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Tom. Any, any further comments? Mayor, I'd like to add that, um, as I mentioned earlier in my comments um, regarding the budget, I think the fact that we have heard about this budget now uh, seven times, we've had detailed presentations, is, as I've said before, a testament to the administration's commitment to transparency in other communities who are also going through municipal budget um, hearings right now. The first time the community sees the budget is the night it's introduced. And people scramble for 28 days to try to understand what's in there and comment. The fact that we um, have had the opportunity to discuss and comment on the budget for as long as we have, frankly, leads to a little bit of an anticlimactic adoption. There's no one here to comment. We have thoroughly exhausted you know, every <laughs> source of information. And I would much rather have uh, you know, this um, a situation where everyone feels comfortable with the information we have than to feel like we are trying to rush something through um, in a short period without public uh, engagement and the transparent process that we appreciate and enjoy here in town. So I want to echo uh, Mr. Harlan Pudis's thanks to the Finance Department, to Jim and to Chrissy. 
It's um, been an enlightening uh, last seven presentations, and thank you for the hard work you put in to make this information accessible to all. Very well said. As um, pointed out, this is kind of anticlimactic when you do, you're do as thorough as Borough of Madison is, and uh, to our council and our, our team. I am um, obviously very involved with uh, other towns and what they do, and I don't think anyone comes close to this. And so that's, I think, one of the reasons why we have such a small group, because, as you said, uh, Rachel, we've covered it pretty well inside and out. Any other comments from the council? Okay. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Oh, the title or the uh, line there? Okay. I have um, the title or what's line F? I'm not sure. Oh, um, I have one second. Let me find my resolution here. Yeah. 130-2023. Okay. So you want me to read? That's fine, Mike. On your mic. Be it resolved that the council. Whoops, I'm on. Right. Be it resolved that the council members of the borough of Madison County of Mars that the budget herein set forth is hereby adopted and shall constitute an appropriation of, for the purpose stated, of the sums herein set forth as appropriations and authorization of the amount of fourteen million five hundred ninety-five thousand two hundred twenty-five uh, dollars. Item. For the municipal purposes, uh, six hundred and forty-nine. I'm not sure I'm saying these correctly. Six hundred and forty-nine thousand nine hundred and fifty-nine twenty-three for the open space, recreation, farmland, and historic preservation trust levy, and one million four hundred and seventy thousand nine hundred and seventy-three for the minimum library tax. Is that, um, Again, we have a motion and a second. All right. Yeah. Okay. I think we moved it, and now we just yeah. the vote remains. Okay. So I will do the roll call again. Okay. Right. Mr. Hoover. Yes. Ms. Ehrlich. Yes. Mr. Landrian. Yes. Mr. Range. Yes. Mr. Harlan Poots. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Well done. We now move on to communications and petition. Uh, none received, Mayor. All right. And now we're on to the first of two uh, invitations for public comment. This is limited to our discussion items, which there are none tonight, uh, and the resolutions that are part of the consent agenda. We'll go through those resolutions in just a second so you know what you can comment on and also know when we get to that part of the uh, agenda what is in the consent. Um, these are the resolution 131, resolution uh, rejecting bids for uh, mass utility building roof repairs and authorizing rebid. The, uh, most, the two primary bids were uh, flawed. Resolution 132 is approving probationary firefighter list, which will be existing for two years. Resolution uh, 133 is setting salaries for full time non union personnel. Resolution 134 is uh, authorizing contract to Facility Solutions Group under the Interlocal Purchasing System National Cooperative Tips for uh, Purchase of LED Light Fixtures, and um, this is not to exceed $65,000. Resolution uh, 135 is supporting the establishment of Veteran Affairs uh, uh, Center in Northwest New Jersey. We have uh, we had passed a uh, previous resolution, and this is redoing it now that um, we want to send it also to Representative Tom Kane. Resolution 136 is ratifying special event permit to allow use of Summerhill Park by Boy Scout Troops of America, Patriot Pack 7, and Troop 7. These are various events through the year. Resolution 137 is authorizing special event permit to allow use of Summerhill Park by Boy Scouts of America, Patriot Pack. 124 on June 3rd. Resolution 138 is canceling substantially completed capital improvement 
Ordinance 7 uh, 2022, and uh, that will uh, $150,000 balance will be transferred back into the uh, capital fund. Resolution 139 is ratifying salary increase to full-time confidential employees excluded from union participation. This uh, is, follows what the uh, unions get as uh, increases. Resolution 140 is appointing uh, William Kiernan to a position of substitute uh, crossing guard. Resolution 141 is awarding uh, contract to Schifano Construction for paving improvements under the Morris County Co-op in an amount not to exceed $650,000, and this was funded through ordinances um, 2022 and ordinance 8-2023. Ordinance 142 is authorizing the farmer's market for 2023. It's coming up. Excuse me. Resolution 143 is appointing Joseph Montagna to position of substitute crossing guard. And Resolution 144 is authorizing execution of developer agreement with the Madison Mall Apartment LLC for development at 286 to 294 Main Street. Uh, those are the resolutions to make comment on. Anyone in the public wishing to comment on those resolutions, please step forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And we now move on, since there's no agenda discussions, we now move on to ordinance for hearing. So the first, please read the statement. The ordinance is scheduled for hearing. We're introduced by title and pass on first reading at the regular meeting of the council held on April the 10th, 2023. They were posted and filed according to law, and copies were made available to the general public requesting same. I call up ordinances for second reading at the ordinance by title, ordinance 25-23. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 94, Attachment 3, Appendix C, entitled Electric Utility Department Rules and Regulations. I open the hearing. Anyone wishing to comment, please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 25 2023. Second. Second. Oh, sorry. Any, any council discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlan Poudis? Yes. I declare ordinance 25 2023 adopted and finally passed, and ask the clerk to publish notice there of the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 26 2023. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 94, Appendix A of the Borough Code entitled Electric Utility regarding net metering. I open hearing for Ordinance 26. Anyone wishing to comment, please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 26-2023. Uh, are you second? Second, sorry. Thank you. Uh, um, any council discussion? We'll call both, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mm. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Rain? Yes. Mr. Harlan Poudis? Yes. All right, I declare Ordinance 26 2023 document finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice for newspaper and finally ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 27 2023. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 94 of the Borough Code entitled Electric Utility to amend the rules and regulations of the electric utility department and set forth requirements, fees, and rates for customers who feed electricity into Madison's electric system. I open hearing on Ordinance 27. Anyone wishing to comment, please step forward. Seeing that, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 27-2023. Second. Any council discussion? Mayor, I know you can't see me, so I'm just going to briefly chime in to say, uh, similar to what I said at the last meeting at the introduction of these ordinances, it's exciting to have these uh, be adopted um, and bring Madison's electric utility into the 21st century in terms of our ability to do net metering, um, in, in introduce more renewable energy into our local grid and uh, support these moves through um, clarifications to our rate structure. So this is 
Um, what comes across as a kind of technical set of ordinances is really a gateway to moving into the next phase of implementation for renewable energy. So this is an exciting night for those of us that are following along with this development. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlan Poudis? Yes. I declare ordinance 27 that point. As published, their favorite part of the ordinance is over. Now we're on to the second uh, invitation for public comment. Do you want to comment? Please step forward, take your senior address, you, uh, write this on the board, try to keep your comments to three minutes, but we will be a one minute break before anyone would please step forward. Yes. Um, my name is Mary Ann Belloc, and I live at 52 Glen Wild Road. Uh, concerned for the declining animal population, I am grateful for Madison's efforts in regards to saving the Drew Forest. Animals of many species have found their habitats destroyed. Habitats are being destroyed by both human development and climate change. Birds thrive on the forest edge. The birds that call Drew Forest their home or way station include blue jays, cardinals, tanagers, titmouse, finches, and chickadees, and probably more. In the forest, they find food from native plants and raise broods allowing future generations to continue. 20 years ago, I watched a mama turkey, a wild turkey, lead her brood from the Drew Forest through my backyard into a patch of woods between Woodland and Glen Wild Road. She was probably headed into Lawanica Park. Wild turkeys nest on the ground in dead leaves at the bases of trees under brush piles or thick shrubbery. A few years ago, we saw a wood duck with her ducklings wandering through the same, in the same direction. These birds live in wooded swamps where they nest in holes in, up high in the trees. And they are one of the f a few duck species equipped with strong claws that, allow, that can grip the bark and perch on branches. Contiguous habitat units are areas of continuous natural cover, separated by roads, developed areas, or agricultural lands. Ideally, these areas are connected with other similar areas so that the animals that use them can move freely to other forested areas and habitats. I wish there were more patches of continuous, continu, contiguous forest to enable these birds and animals to survive. Thank you, Mayor Connolly and Council, for pursuing a solution with Drew University to save this special place that we have here in Madison. Thank you so much for your comment. Anyone else wishing to comment, please step forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting and we move on to interaction of ordinances. Will the clerk please read the statement? Ordinance is scheduled for first reading, have a hearing date set for May the 22nd, 2023. All will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on a bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up uh, Ordinance 28-2023. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, amending Chapter 195-29.1 of the Madison Borough Code, entitled Zoning Map to Adjust the CBD one CBD two zone line for block 1802, lot 11. Mayor, I move ordinance 28-2023. Second. Council discussion. This, this addresses, there, there are um, several lots that uh, cross from one zone to another, and in particular on the block between uh, Elmer and uh, Main Street. And, um, so it's CBD1, CBD2, and 
this allows for a, a better uh, planned uh, development for the property by just shifting it uh, on this particular block. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Herlick? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlan Pudis? Yes. And Ordinance 29 2020. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $250,000 from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of pole top capacitor banks and accessories. Mayor, I move Ordinance 29 2023. Mayor, I second. Council discussion. Mayor, I'll just add a sentence of uh, clarification about this ordinance. This um, purchase of pole top capacitors for our electric utility represents um, a needed investment to improve and harden our local grid. In part, it's required by our interconnection agreement with JCPNL, but it's also going to improve our grid as we continue to um, invest in it, to, to prepare it for additional loading and uh, uh, peaks and valleys in electrical usage across town. And it's a meaningful uh, capital investment in one of the borough's most valuable assets, which is our local grid. Excellent. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlan Pudis? Yes. All right, now we move on to. Uh, Consent agenda resolutions. Please read the statement. Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mayor, I move uh, approval of resolution 131-2023 to 144-2023. Second. Any other discussion? I have one, Mayor. Roll call vote. Yep. Yes. Can't let you go without having a question. Uh, yep. Resolution 134-2023, which is tips for the purchase of LED light fixtures. So are we gonna uh, have some light fixtures added around the borough? Jim, Rachel, Ray, yep. Oh, so that we're changing out some of those historic lamps. Oh, that's great. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlan Pudis? Yes. All right, there is no unfinished business. Uh, so, approval vouchers. Will the clerk please read the voucher totals? For the current fund, $4,236,152.57. From the general capital fund, $291,108.03. From the electric operating fund, $499,870.24. And from the water operating fund, $27,205.16. From the water capital fund, $53,124, and from the trust, $10,912.07. The total is $5,118,372.07. Mayor, I move with the payment of the vouchers. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlan Pudis. Yes. All right, under new business, a couple of appointments. This one I'm just going to announce. It does not uh, require uh, council uh, consent. Uh, Maureen Byrne, Albright Circle, one year term to de through December 31st, 2023. This is Library Board of Trustees. She is going to be serving as the uh, alternate to the mayor uh, on, on that board. All right, and I'd like to uh, make the following appointment and requiring uh, council confirmation. And this is Shade Tree uh, Management Board, and this includes some uh, shifting of uh, alternates. So Brian Monahan, Green Hill, will move into unexpired terms through December 31st, 2026. 
George Limbaugh and Noe will move into the alternate one um, slash unexpired term through December 31st, 2026. And Robin Tryon of Ferndale Road, a new appointment to alternate two-member unexpired five-year term through December 31st, 2025. Can I have a motion to approve those appointments? So moved. Second. Can I hear a second? I did it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you. All right. We are on to uh, item 21. Can I have a motion for adjourn to adjournment? I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting, Mayor. That's my job. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you all. Thank Aye. you for uh, putting up my uh, picture on the screen and moving from the club. Everyone have a great uh, week and uh, enjoy uh, green and clean.